Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of The Monster's Den. We're going old school tonight, thanks to Craig. We got the candle is back. Nice. For the first time in what, like a year? I don't think I've used a candle in like a year. We used to do that. Yeah, yeah it's been a while. So we've got uh, in the house Craig Kaminsky, Chris Allo, and Jamie Laszlo. We've got uh, an interesting topic today. This has been requested by some of our viewers and uh, these are the five most disturbing films we've ever seen. So disturbing good, disturbing bad. I guess we'll find out, right? So we've each got five picks. We're going to talk about why they're so disturbing to us. And then uh, we'll have some honorable mentions at the end. So the man with the candle is going to go first. We'll have, we'll go Craig, Chris, Jamie, myself, and round the round until we get to number one. So what do you got for number five? All right. My first, uh, first uh, pick for tonight is one that's, not really even a, it's not a horror movie, although the antagonist is what you, is definitely what you would call a monster. And uh, you would never see your dentist perhaps the same, the same way. So from 1976, Marathon Man with uh, Dustin Hoffman and Sir Lawrence Olivier in a Oscar nominated role as a uh, Der, Der Weisse Engel, the White Angel, who is a, he is a diamond thief and a Nazi uh, who uh, is on the run in New York and trying to uh, work with his brother to find his cache of diamonds. Um, Dustin Hoffman plays a graduate student who is unwittingly caught up in everything uh, due to his, his older brother, played by Roy Scheider, is a CIA agent and uh, is killed uh, eventually by Lawrence Olivier. He has like these almost like Wolverine uh, knives that, that come out. And he, he looks like a, a kindly, you know, just a normal looking old man. I don't, he, I, I'm assuming he would wear a wig in a, or toupees in a lot of movies, but I think he just looked au naturel in this. And so he just had white hair on, on the sides and wore eyeglasses and just looked like a normal, normal man. But uh, thinking that Roy Scheider, as he was dying, uh, told his brother about the, uh, the diamonds, Dustin Hoffman is kidnapped by, uh, by uh, the white angel and see, and tortured in a famous scene where he repeatedly in a calm, flat demeanor asks him, is it safe? Is it safe? And uh, Dustin Hoffman doesn't know what he's talking about. And finally he unfurls some dental tools and just starts, you, you don't really see it, but it's kind of the idea that, you know, somebody, some stranger picking around in your teeth and you know he hits something at one point because he, he he winces and is crying and later he has a drill and he says oh that tooth is already dying so i'm going to drill into a, a new tooth until i hit the pulp unless you can tell me is it safe and it's it's just it's very disturbing for uh i've i've always i've taken pretty good care of my teeth and uh maybe as a result of this movie i even joked to my dentist one time and said have you ever said that to uh, you know to any of your patients? And he said, "Well, he said I don't think you'd have to be of a certain age, or else you wouldn't really uh, get the reference." Yeah. But uh, but he he knew what it was and and uh, got a got a laugh out of it. There are some other scenes in the movie too where that are disturbing with uh, some of the violence, where Roy Scheider is attempted to be killed at one point and strangled, and he stops it with like his hand. I mean, and just it, it makes you uncomfortable that it's like if, if someone was trying to strangle you with piano wire or some kind of. I mean, just having it cut into your into your hands, and uh, so it again, not a. It's not a horror movie. It's more of a thriller, but there's definitely some parts in it that that it it makes me feel uneasy and just disturbed just every time I see, especially those uh, those dental scenes. So uh, yeah, uh, Marathon Man. That's a good one. I haven't seen that in a long time. That's a good one. Me neither. Yeah. Since the old VHS days. Yeah, I had that on VHS as well. Yeah. Cool. All right, Chris. Uh, all right, my number five uh, is a movie that I actually do like, even though it is uh, uh, somewhat still disturbing, although it used to disturb me more as a kid. 
Uh, I am wearing the t-shirt for uh, Ilsa, She-Wolf of the SS uh, from 1975, uh, starring Diane Thorne. And uh, it's pretty much, you know, the two reasons I like this movie so much uh, are the left one and the right one. Uh, <laughs> Diane Thorne has enormous boobs and she looks hot as hell in a SS officer uniform. And yeah, the whole movie takes place in, a, uh, in an SS camp. Uh, where they uh, they torture uh, people and of course at the end um, they, they get their revenge. Uh, it is pretty uh, graphic uh, with um, women just being and some men too, but it's mostly the women just being graphically uh, tortured. You know, uh, stick, sticking uh, you know electro electric uh dildos and just all sorts of stuff uh it, it definitely bothered me more when i first saw it as a kid uh i think it was the band uh mucky pup was it mucky pup or murphy's law had the band uh the song ilsa she wolf the ss one of those crossover bands which i, I can't remember now. i think it was murphy's law um but um you know when i saw it as a kid it was more disturbing now it's uh, less disturbing because i look at it somewhat as a of a black comedy, uh, but the part that is still disturbing is okay. You know, the, the Holocaust was a very real thing. And, you know, this is, uh, you know, even though this is not trying to be realistic, this was based on, you know, people really were tortured and, and killed, you know. So that's the part to me that is still, even though I do like it, yeah, I've got the shirt, I've got many Ilsa posters. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's that's the part to me that's still uh, disturbing. As much as I like it, yeah, it's still you know based on real life events, which are completely fucking horrific. Uh, yeah. So that's my uh, my number five. And that happened in in Marathon Man as well, where there's a scene where he's recognized on the street by uh, he's in the Diamond Diamond uh, Market or uh, Avenue, and people recognize him and come up to him and are screaming his name, and it's and it kind of makes you that it's like yeah, things like that really did happen, and yeah, it is it is disturbing. Yeah, for, yeah, for sure. Um, but there's still a lot of great boobs, so oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the best part of the movie. There's tons of nudity. You know, all, all the all the all the women that they torture, they're all fucking hot with big boobs. But of course, they are. Yeah, of course. Well, you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't want actor. It would it would be no fun if you brought in like emaciated actresses who look <laughs> terrified. You know, you've got to bring in you know ladies who look like models with big hair and lots of makeup and their tits hanging out, and then you torture them because that's at least somewhat fun. <laughs> all right, Jamie, what do you got? Well, there is nothing somewhat fun about any of my movies. <laughs> and I I struggled with this because, you know, I, I, I didn't know how to talk about these movies because we all know what happened all those months ago when I talked about happiness. And I did not want to repeat that. So I'm like, how do I talk about these movies? Well, I'm not going to get too specific on some of them. Um, but I'll I'll go as far as I can. This one, which uh, this guy is from uh, The Human, Human Centipede 2, the second sequence. This could be on my list, but I refuse to watch it again. I saw it 10 years ago, so I forget a lot about it. But I remember people were pooping in each other's mouth. And if you're doing that, you're on the list. But I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to move on to my number five. And these are in order of how disturbing they are. This is actually the least disturbing. I'm going to go with Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. But as I talk about these movies, I don't want you to focus too much on what I'm saying because things are going to get heavy. So here, look at the beach, why I talk about this movie. <laughs> Everybody loves the beach. Focus on the beach as I talk about Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. This is Michael Rooker. This isn't cute Michael Rooker from Guardians of the Galaxy. There's no, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. No. In fact, every time I see him in a movie, still to this day, I go, oh, it's Henry. Look, he's kind of typecast in my mind. I saw this movie on VHS when I, in the 80s. And uh, actually, the second time I ever saw it was last week. And I remembered a lot of it because this kind of movie stays in your brain. 
Henry is a killer, a serial killer, and it's based on a true story. And you see in the beginning, the deaths and the murders that he is leaving behind as he's traveling. You see a woman dead with a Coke bottle broken, stuck down her throat. I'm telling you, this is going to get heavy. Um, and then he lives, goes and lives with Otis and Otis's sister. And sis his sister's, Otis's sister is kind of not in the know. She doesn't know how crazy everyone is. But Otis, you think he's just like goofy guy, but no, he starts making moves on his sister. He starts getting very aggressive with his sister. There's a scene where he's raping his sister and Henry of all people have, have to save her and kills Otis. Otis ends up in a suitcase. But before that, Otis wants to get on the killing spree and with Henry and they go and they kill this family of three in their own home. And it is very disturbing to watch because they're videotaping the whole thing and they're acting like, isn't the beach beautiful? I wish I, it's been like 15 years since I've been to the beach and they're killing this family of three and they're acting like they're on summer vacation. They're smiling, they're laughing, they're using the dead bodies, pretending like to wave to the camera. The, the sun comes in, it was like 12, they kill the sun. And when it's over and they go back home, Otis watches this tape of them killing these people over. And over, there's a scene where he's passed out from drinking. You could tell he was watching it over and over as he was drinking. He watches it in slow motion. He can't get enough of this. So after Otis dies, Otis's sister's in love with Henry. And they're driving away. And uh, the sister goes, I think I love you, or I love you. And uh, Henry goes, well, I guess I love you too. And they go to this hotel and... The sister ends up in a suitcase too by the side of the road. But this is very real feeling. It's, it's a grimy movie, kind of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It leaves you feeling uneasy. The uh, Michael Rooker, he, he feels real, like you might be next. So yes, believe it or not, this is coming in fifth place of how disturbing <laughs> these movies are. I mean, it's a great performance by him, but yeah, it's it's not an easy film to watch. No. Yeah, I got four that are harder to watch. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my number five. Uh, this is a film that I, I I rented when it first came out, and uh, you know, kind of like Chris with his pick. It's like you know, sometimes you can really like a film that just like really is so heavy and so disturbing, and you're like, all right. I enjoyed that, or did I, right? This, this film is kind of like that. Uh, the film is Eden Lake from 2008. Uh, it's this one right here. And yes, that is uh, Kelly Riley, who many folks will know from the uh, Ke Kevin Costner series that's all so popular right now, which the name is- Yellowstone? Yellowstone? Yellowstone, yes. So she plays the daughter, his daughter in Yellowstone. So everybody knows Kelly Riley these days. This is one of her first films. And Michael Fassbender's in this as well. Uh, of course, from the X-Men films and also many, many other things that he's done. So this story is about a couple, the two of them, who decide they're going to go on like a weekend getaway to uh, a lake that's out way out in the middle of nowhere in, in uh, the UK. Uh, it's like, you know, a countryside lake called Eden Lake, right? And they're going to go camping and spend a couple days with nature, right? So they go, they set up a tent, they get a spot right on the beach of the lake and everything is great. They're enjoying the weather, enjoying their company. They're in love, you know? And then uh, shortly after they make camp there, down the beach a little bit is a group of teenagers who are hanging out teenagers and their dog and they're playing music really loud and they're horsing around and whatnot so you know the couple's like you know this whole lake and you got to be right here type of thing so uh but they just don't give a shit right so they're they're, they're staring at her she's wearing a bikini and so michael fassman is like i'm gonna go over and have a talk with them so he goes over and he's like you know could you turn the music down could you maybe like kind of you know keep things a little quiet and of course, they don't take too kindly to that, right? So they're like, ah, oh, yeah, whatever, don't you worry, you know, that sort of thing. And then as the movie progresses, 
these kids decide to take it to another level, right? So they go and they, while they're in the water, they go and they steal their stuff. They eventually steal their car keys and take their car. So this leads to like a confrontation between the couple and them. Of course, you know, it doesn't go well. Uh, these kids are not good kids by any means. And uh, a scuffle ensues. The dog winds up getting killed, not by one of the couple, but of course, by accidentally by one of the kids. But then, of course, they blame it on the couple. So they wind up like capturing the two of them. And she winds up escaping. They wind up torturing Michael Fassbender's character. Um, and then the whole rest of the movie, he winds up dying. I'm not going to give the ending away, but and so the good chunk of the movie is her trying to escape through the woods away from these kids who are not not good at all. And uh, after a whole series of events, the torture that they do to both of them is just it's awful. It's really hard to watch, but the performances are so good, especially of uh, Kelly and Michael in this film. And the end when she finally she finally gets out and she gets back to a road with this civilization she gets picked up by a car by some guy in a car and she's like can you take me to town i need to go find help you know and uh so he does that drops her off uh in this first little residential area that they come upon so she gets out she goes up to the first house that she sees she goes and knocks and tells them everything that happened you know my my fiance and all that that uh newsflash he actually proposes to her while he's ready to die right after he's because that was the big reason why they went on this uh, trip was he was going to propose to her so as he's like in his final minutes he pulls a ring out of his pocket and it's like you know i wanted to, to ask you to marry me right so she goes into the house she explains her tale of woe there's a whole bunch of people there in the house and they're like oh really okay whatever well why don't you uh, she's like well I'm, i have to go to the bathroom and clean up and stuff but you know we need to get a hold of the cops okay sure sure next thing next thing that happens of course who comes walking in the front door but the asshole kid and leader of this gang of kids walks in it's actually his family whose house she walked into so as it turns out the family is just as bad as him and the rest of his friends are and i'm not going to spoil the ending but it's like one of the most downer bleak endings of any film you'll ever see and you just feel like you've gone through this journey with these two and all this bad shit that happens and you just want some shred of something good to happen and uh you may not get it so and it's pretty graphic it's 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 like i said it's just one of these uh more recent films that uh just really plays up on the whole torture and uh just real shitty 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 people and you just it, you just don't feel good about it but it's one of those movies that you can't you, i mean i've watched it multiple times and i'm like wow at the end you just feel awful and you feel like you want to take a shower but then you want to watch it again and maybe that's just because of the performances of the actors and whatnot but uh yeah you know just just goes to show that uh kids can be really really cruel just as much as adults can so mm -hmm. i was gonna say pete let me borrow this movie a couple months ago i watched it and i enjoyed it but pete did leave out a key component is that when uh yeah they're, they're going camping but they're going camping in an area that's been blocked off by fences with no trespassing. That's true. So it's yeah, like, yeah. it's not like they're camping. It's not a vacation place. Yeah, yeah right. it's like, wait, okay. The, yeah, the kids were here doing fucked up stuff, but you, you, to me, it's almost like you did it to yourself. Like you're, you're too cheap to go to a real fucking campsite. Like you're not supposed to be there and you got fucked. So who can you blame? I mean, it sucks, but that's what I kept thinking the whole time. Well, if you would go on to a real campsite, this never would have happened to fucking uh, Daffy or Woody or, yeah, or Bugs yeah. or whoever the fuck. And if is. I remember correctly, it, it was uh, this whole area was like blocked off for it had nothing to do with the kids or the people in the town or everything like yeah, that. Yeah, I think it was they were con it was construction or something. But you know, he had to like drive past all these fences and all, and it was like a, a trip. Yeah. And it was you know, weird. When like, they get there, it's gorgeous. I mean, I'm like, yeah. wow, I'd love to be hanging out on that lake too. But yeah. Yeah, but these kids, man, oof, bad news, bad news. All right, back to Craig. All right, my next pick uh, is one of true life. The the things that uh, some of the things that uh, disturb me the most are things that are uh, actually real, like sports injuries. Uh, whenever I see uh, things like that, is uh, 
Uh, I think we've all seen the, the video of Joe Theismann breaking his leg in the 80s or uh, most recently during the NCAA tournament I, a few years ago, uh, a guy went up for a jump shot, came down, and he, he had a compound fracture, I mean, right there on live TV, so it's nasty. But uh, uh, this one is more uh, is it, this one is a is a horror movie. It's been it's been mentioned a few times, you know, on on prior episodes with with some things. And it's for me, it's disturbing for all the aspects of uh, claustrophobia. Uh, and there's some uh, uh, sports injuries in it as well. And that's the Descent uh, from 2005. Uh, in a nutshell, a group group of women uh, spelunkers uh, go to explore some caves, of course, where they're they don't have a map or they threw away the map or or whatever. So, I mean, they are skilled, but uh, when you're in the dark and you don't know which way you're going and you're just kind of trying to follow the wind and you know which way is it going, they're kind of lost. And with just the very tight spaces, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm a little broad, so it's like at all these, every time I see things like this, where it's like, where they're in these super tight, tight spots, and, you know, one girl's co coaching to the other one, you know, they, you know, you know, you, you can do it, you know, get through, and it's like, oh my God, if I had to uh, crawl through that, there's, there's no friggin' way I, I, I would make it, I mean, my wife and I, some years ago, we on vacation, I, it was, I think it was in Chattanooga, we went to a place called Ruby Falls, and, uh, and they showed these uh, dugout uh, portions where, you know, people actually had, you know, had to dig this stuff out by hand, you know, back then. And they were so narrow. And it was like, there was, I mean, I looked at it. I mean, it was like, like this narrow to put a whole person in there, you know, chiseling. There's no way I would, I would, uh, I would make it. But then besides the, uh, claustrophobic aspect of this movie oh by the way there's also monsters uh in it that are like cave dwelling uh blind cannibals that are that are out there so there's a lot of disturbing parts where it's like what did you did you see something did you not see and they're uh freaky things from a distance where uh you see something you know tur turning around and looking at i mean it's uh just just uh a lot of that was uh, on first viewing. I mean, a lot of these, you know, the, the more you see them, of course, the, the uh, disturbing part kind of, you know, wears wears down a little bit. But uh, all those tight, tight spots in there where these ladies, uh, no matter how skilled they are, are are squeezing themselves through and trying to evade the the monsters and with sports uh, sports injuries where someone fall, uh one of the one of the women falls and she breaks her leg and or breaks her ankle in a nasty spot i mean it's oh things like that are that really do happen and so it's things that uh personally for me is uh is is a little on the disturbing side so yeah so my my pick is the descent yeah the more claustrophobic you are the harder it is to watch that yeah, that yeah. is one of the most claustrophobic films of all time. Yeah, cool. Chris, did you get a new camera, a new light, or something like that? You, you... Yeah, Jim from Hitman sent me this light. I guess he wanted to see me better, so ah, it looks I got amazing. this light in the mail, and I was like, uh, I didn't order this. I order a lot of shit off Amazon, but I don't remember ordering this. <laughs> and then, like a week later, he's like, Hey, did you get that light? I'm like, Oh yeah. So shout out to Jim from Hitman. Th thanks. For, now, now, now Pete can see. My my beautiful features. Yeah, I'm telling you, it looks good. It looks good. Good job, Jim Baki. Very good. All right, Chris, back to you. Okay, number four. Uh, like Ilsa, this is one I saw off the, the in the theater, uh, and this one I do have an interesting story with. Uh, and yeah, it's uh, probably the most famous or most infamous of the subgenre of Italian cannibal films, and it's 1980s Cannibal Holocaust. Uh, directed by Ruggiero Diodato. And uh, if you haven't seen the film, very briefly, because I'm already like, holy fuck, this is going to be like a five-hour episode, guys, if we don't fucking hurry this up. Uh, there's a bunch of, of students in New York travel to South America to film a documentary on cannibals, and then they, they are lost. So uh, an another crew goes down to South America, they don't, there's some bodies, they find film canisters, and they want to, uh, it's a TV uh, station that wants to broadcast the, um, uh, the reels as a 
uh, a TV special. And when you find when they you watch the reels, you see that uh, the cannibals, uh, they really I guess they were cannibals. But when they, you, sh you show the reels, you see that it's the American students who then once they're down in South America are now torturing the tribes and they're stabbing them and raping them and they shoot, you know, one or two. And uh, of course, you know, they um, they decide not to run it. But it's basically, as far as I know, the first real found footage film, which I do not like, but this is the original, you know, when everybody was, was you know, going crazy over Blair Witch Project, I'm like, a, a big fucking deal. Like, not a new I saw, yeah. yeah, this is not new. You can't, Cannibal Holocaust did this fucking, you know, a decade plus ago. Um, but the thing that makes it, and it is disturb, disturbing, you know, the cannibal footage, they eat the entrails and stuff, but what's really disturbing is, yeah, there's quite a few scenes of animals being tortured, and uh, it is extremely graphic, and yeah, it is by far the worst part of the film. Uh, on the Blu-ray, which I, I wasn't going to dig up, there is a, uh, there's two versions of the movie, there's the regular version, and then a slightly edited version which takes out all the uh the animal torture uh, but my quick story is um like probably like 15 years ago i was just about to or had already started doing my own uh film festival hudson horror show uh, up here in new york and um they were part of uh, uh the theater i was going to run it through was part of a larger chain might have been regal or one of the big chains anyway that chain owned a theater in Manhattan, which was doing a midnight screening in Manhattan of Cannibal Holocaust, which I had never seen off 35 millimeter film. Uh, and I knew I wanted to run Cannibal Holocaust at some point. Uh, and I knew I could get it through Grindhouse releasing because they were the ones who were re-releasing it in the 2000s. So I went to the city to see it. And this is a movie that I'd already seen maybe a dozen times. I'd already owned it on VHS, Laserdisc and DVD. And um, so I knew what to expect. I knew the mo movie backwards and forwards, but I wanted to see it because uh, if, um, you know, if, if this, the theater chain was gonna give me any shit about playing it in Poughkeepsie, I was gonna be like, fuck you, because your other theater played in Manhattan. But the point of the story is, even though I'd seen this movie a ton of times, once I saw it in Manhattan projected on the big screen, the only time this has ever happened to me during a movie, there's a part where a giant snapping turtle, his head is chopped off by somebody with a machete and the, the head, the, the, uh, the decapitated head is still snapping away. My, my stomach actually did a, a belly flop. And I was like, wow, that's fucked up. I have seen this movie so many times, but seeing it so graphic and on the big screen. So, you know, whatever it was, 30 years later, this was still a movie that really could, could make you queasy. And um, yeah, it's it's definitely pretty disturbing, and that's uh, that's my number four. I avoided it on purpose. I, I don't yeah. want to see it. I never will see. It. So it should be my number one. Right, technically. When you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got, Jamie? <clears throat> well, I am going with another true story. The girl next door. This is not the 2004 romantic comedy. This is I, was gonna say, I think I saw that. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, it's not I'm about the porn realistic. star living next door to the 18 year old. And he's like, oh, oh, yeah, the did you ever read the this, book of this? Yeah. Oof. Jack Ketchum. No, it's based on the murder of Sylvia Likens. Yeah. Um, Stephen King said this is the most disturbing American horror movie since Henry, Portrait of the Serial Killer. There you go. And I also own the, this was 10 bucks. And I wanted to watch it again. So I'm like, I'll just buy it for 10 bucks. Um, this movie is about a psychopath woman called Auntie Ruth. And two girls lose their parents in an auto accident. And they go live with Auntie Ruth and her psycho children. And um, she doesn't like her nieces very much. The, the poor younger girl, who's probably like 12, she gets spankings on her bare ass all the time. And she has leg braces on. And the aunt doesn't care. And, and she has 
her her sons pull down her damn shorts to beat her. Focus on these guys as I talk. Everybody <laughs> likes these guys, right? I don't know why. He makes shitty movies. He makes shitty music, but everybody loves them. <laughs> They're probably likable guys, so focus on them as I talk. So anyways, she beats the little girl. And then the older girl, who kind of has this crush on the neighbor, neighbor son or the neighbor kid, um, she doesn't like her at all. I think because of jealousy, because maybe she's pretty and young. But she ends up taking her and hanging her in the basement by her arms. And she leaves her down there day and night hanging by her arms. She strips her naked. She lets her, her kids have their way with her. And, you know, they're under 16 years old. Uh, she cuts her. She burns her. Um, she makes the sister watch. The kid next door comes over. He doesn't want this to happen, but he doesn't really do enough to save her. Yeah. He, he could do a lot more. Um, but there is the scene. Every All these movies have to have the scene. Uh, after being down there and just tortured, you know, till she's almost dying, she says, you know what? Uh, let's cut her so she's not wanted by men. So they cut her up pretty good. She, she's ugly and not wanted by men. But then she goes, but she might want men. How can we stop her from wanting men? So president and vice president right there, 2024, I think. They take a blowtorch and they go to her never, never region, nether region with a blowtorch. And they, so that I guess she loses her you know, will to want to be with a guy. And uh, yeah, based on a true story. And it, it's just, you know, once once she goes down in that basement, it's every time they go down there, you know, the kids or Auntie Ruth with the kids. And, and, and she's always, as she's torturing this girl, she's giving like motherly advice as if a mother would tell you why I'm not going to let you use the car for a week because you went out with your friends after midnight and I told you to be home by 11. And this is the voice she is using every time she justifies why she's being tortured. And it's just hard to watch. So, yeah, The Girl Next Door. I'm not recommending any of these movies, by the way. If you go out <laughs> and watch them, that's on you. So, yeah, that's coming in at number four. Yeah, I actually never watched the film because the book was just so hard to read. The, I mean, that aunt, aunt, Auntie Ruth, is one of the worst characters of all time. Oh, just awful. Yeah, that that is one of the grimiest stories of all time. Yeah. Oof. It might have made it easier to swallow maybe in the movie. I have a feeling for some reason the book was more harsh. The book, book is really harsh. It's really, yeah, it's... I, I, for a number of years, was reading tons of horror novels, and Jack Ketchum is, was one of my favorite authors, but that's one of the most graphic books he ever wrote. It's, oof, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. His name is in the title, too, yeah. when it comes on screen. Yeah. yeah, he hasn't done anything in quite a while. I don't even know if he's still writing or not. But, uh... All right, my number uh, four is a movie from 2007. So I don't know if you guys remember, like, in the early, mid-2000s, there were a lot of these... Uh, Horror, uh, horror films international horror films that were being released all over the place and i don't know if you remember that eight films to die for series mm -hmm. on dvd that came out so uh, i was buying these up like crazy the after dark horror fest well uh, my next choice is frontiers a french swiss film uh this is a really odd really gory really graphic film and just to to keep it short uh, Basically, this is like if you if you combine like Hostel, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Saw and Motel Hell all like in a blender, that's what you get here. Um, and the, the basis for this movie, it's like you get you have this like bunch of criminals, like this really bad gang. And they're like on the run and they wind up like uh, stumbling upon out in the countryside, this inn. Uh, that they say, well, we can hang out, we can stay here for a while and kind of stay on the down low, right? Well, of course, it turns out that the inn is run by a family of absolute batshit crazy neo-Nazis. 
So here you have this, this meeting of these two groups of people who are really, really not good at all. And basically the people who own the inn, the neo-Nazis are like, oh, you know, we got fresh meat here, right? What kind of crazy shit can we do to them? So the rest of the film, it is just nonstop blood and gore to the extreme, to the point where it's just, it seems like excessive. I remember watching this and I don't, I, I haven't watched it since I first bought it. And I remember sitting through this and I was kind of like, holy shit. I mean, <laughs> this is like absolutely unrelenting and one of the most brutal films I've ever seen. And, uh, but to the point where, and I like blood and gore and all that kind of stuff in my horror, but sometimes it's just too much to the point where it's just like, it's really unsettling. And that was this, I mean, it says on the back, it says gripping and brutal. The French answered a hostile and saw a heart pounding, uber violent yet thought provoking horror thriller and it turns out like one of the one of the chicks in the gang she's actually pregnant right so that just adds to the whole craziness of it so yeah frontiers is my choice for number four i might have seen that is that the one where there's like some kind of french movie pete where the opening is awesome like there's almost like a like somebody like breaks into a house and there's a shootout and the family's getting shot or stabbed or something yeah, because that's that's is what that the, this movie? that's the group. Yeah, that's the group. So they're okay. they're no good either. But what's right. really interesting is how they stumble upon a, a family that's even more revolting and more ridiculously gotcha. bad than they are. Yeah. So because I, I remember the opening, and then I remember it getting kind of boring, and then the ending, which I wasn't thrilled with. But I just always remember that opening was like, "Wow, holy shit!" Yeah. This, yeah, this movie's just okay. So that's it. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy stuff. All right, back to Craig. No, no. <laughs> I think my, my picks are just the disturbing ones, not necessarily gra graphic, uh, <laughs> graphic with, uh, you know, the blood and guts and, and, uh, and everything, although that's fine. But uh, my next pick is uh, one that's, it's definitely, it's disturbing for me, it just it's, it's very weird. And it's almost like the whole, the whole movie is almost like in a, like a dream state uh, type uh type of thing so and there's a lot of strange things going on so uh from 1980 altered states with uh william hurt and uh blair brown uh william hurt plays a uh i believe he's a graduate student who is experimenting in uh to try and uh, diff altered states of realities using a lot of uh with a uh, sensory deprivation uh, chamber even a lot of that stuff is really weird like the opening credits uh, is him in this uh almost looks like a missile uh you know with his in uh, with uh filled up with water and a you know a globe you know on his head where it's like there's no no sound or no and it and with the the credits uh rolling by uh horizontally it's with weird music it's just the whole movie with him uh, having these hallucinations, taking these uh, different uh, herbs or uh, not pills, or he meets up with like a Native American uh, uh, tribe that it's, I don't know if it's peyote or some, or some sort of hallucinogen. And he sees like all of these religious, strange religious things like a, a cru crucifix with a, a, uh, a sheep with seven eyes and seven horns, really just weird stuff. Ken, Ken Russell, the director, was known for lots of, you know, strange visuals throughout his, throughout his whole career. And this, uh, just as the movie progresses, William Hurt's doing more uh, hallucinating and uh, sensory deprivation. At one point, he starts to uh, de- De devolve into like primordial man where he, he he's not sure if it's really happening or if it's a dream where he's almost like a caveman and his his arms are bub bubbling and you know and going in weird directions he looks like a uh, like a pile of goo at one point i mean it's just there's a lot of just disturbing weird uh things that go on in the movie it's not again not really a horror movie and not terribly graphic but just the the strange, disturbing the the, the religious uh, scenes that he that he's seeing it's it's not a not a real easy film to watch and it's not easy be, not that you know like the ones you guys were saying with the uh, violence and the distastefulness and things like that it's just that it's 
uh, just really kind of strange and and disturbing where you're kind of what what is this and but it's it, it's still worth worth a worth a watch for those who who may not have seen it it's uh, you know, a reasonably reasonably common movie but uh, but it's it it's it's got a, it's got some weird disturbing parts in it so my pick altered states that's another one I haven't seen in a long time I I'm here VHS. Craig, I was going to say, were you at the Exhumed 24-hour show when they ran that? Because that was a few years uh, No, ago. I, I did not. I, I, I've seen the movie before, but not not on a big screen. Gotcha. Yeah, I think Ken Russell did a lot of drugs during... Did yeah. he do the Lair of the White Worm? Yes. Yeah. That and has Tom, some disturbing, Tommy, disturbing you know, the, images. The, the, the devil. The Tommy film is, you know, is strange. I mean, at least, yeah. you know, with all of the things going on in that, even though the mu music's obviously great, but just, yeah, yeah he was, uh, he was a different guy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, Chris. Number all right, my number three, uh, Jamie mentioned it earlier. I was looking around to see if I had any action figures. I have a Riddler figure, but I don't have anything else floating around. Uh, to demonstrate uh, 2009's Human Centipede, uh, which I think is, uh, yeah, it's pretty disturbing. One uh, or two, the first uh, one? I, I, I did watch both of them. For some reason, I can't really differentiate between one and two. Uh, my buddy, at, me and my, my friend at work, uh, we used to have the office where nobody was there. So we had Netflix. We would watch movies at lunch. And uh, we he made me watch the first one. And I, I didn't like it. And then, like. A year later, Netflix had Human Centipede 2, and I watched that one. I, but I think I remember the first one more because there's less people in the first one. Because the second right, one's black and white. Is it? Yeah. Fuck. It's so graphic, they couldn't have color because they wouldn't get away with what they were doing. If you can yeah, see is, there only, is there only three people in the Centipede in the first one? The in second the first one, one that's what I remember. I think it was, it was a girl, two girls and a guy, I think. And if you haven't seen him, some crazy mad scientist comes up with his idea to get three people and get them naked and sew them together. So he sews, you know, one guy's lips to an, uh, a girl's butt and then sews uh, his butt to another girl's lips so that um, one person, the, the girl in the front can eat and then chew. And when she takes a shit, it goes in the next person's mouth. And then she shits, she eats it, and then shits it into the next person, and then the last person shits it out. I mean, it's the fucking stupidest concept. The uh, middle is the the middle is the absolute uh, not the. Oh well, yeah, middle guy has it worst. <laughs> yeah. uh, front guy has it best. Uh, there, and there's only three people in, that make up the first human centipede. Uh, I guess I, Jamie remembers the second one better than me because I don't remember it being in black and white. Uh, maybe it wasn't off Netflix then because I don't remember being back. Maybe, I, maybe he got the disc or something. Um, but yeah, just the whole concept is gross and icky. And, you know, it's just funny because thinking about this whole thing, it's like, you know, uh, these are disturbing uh, horror movies. You know, to me, uh, like a movie like Dawn of the Dead, which has entrails and people getting their heads fucking blown off every, every other, that's, 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 uh, that's comfort food to me. You know, that's not disturbing in the least. But that's disturbing to some people. Um, so, you know, this whole uh, concept is is uh, pretty interesting. But yeah, to me, this was uh, this was kind of uh, disturbing and just, you know, not something I was really uh, en entertained by. So that's my my pick. And, and the stuff. first one, at least the guy was a doctor. And the second one is just some crazy dude who's a fan of the first movie and okay. says, I can do this. And he wings it. It's not well done. So as they're pooping into the next person, you can see it coming down the sides because it's not connected like a doctor would do. Uh, yeah, like I said, I won't watch it again. The South Park version is funny. Uh, the human sent iPad. Uh, where, where they, yeah, I didn't uh, even know that. Yeah, that, that one is, a, is more of a funny uh, version of it. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's All right, Jamie. Well, we're going to get to the most violent movie on my list itchy the killer uh. 2001 japanese movie um oh, this is it. hard to talk about guys i'm going to tip to tiptoe through the tulips lightly on this one but what 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 nice image do i have for you to focus on instead of focusing Puppies? too much on me puppies cats super grover 
that's everybody cool. loves Super Grover. So look at Super Grover. Have happy thoughts as I tell you about this movie. Uh, the the opening title, Itchy the Killer. The graphics rises out of a puddle of semen left behind by Itchy the Killer. So right away, you know, they're not going to pull any punches in this movie. And they literally pull no punches because women get beat to hell in this movie to where they're you see their face puffed up. Their eyes are, you know, barely open. It's really relentless. There are, this really isn't like a cohesive movie as much as it's just a bunch of series of events, one worse than the next. Uh, it's basically about Itchy the Killer, some childlike guy who's programmed to kill these gang members one by one, but who cares? It doesn't matter what the movie's about. Um, the main guy who's uh, uh, like the gang member, head of the gangs, he has his cheeks sliced on both sides. So his mouth opens really wide, but to keep it stable, he puts rings right here. So his mouth opens normal unless he takes out the rings and then opens wide and then he swallows a fist and then chews off the skin as the guy takes his fist out. But they have um, a scene where they're torturing a guy, trying to get information out of him. They have him hanging from the ceiling parallel with the floor with hooks in his back and his legs and his skin is stretched out from the hooks. He's not giving the answers that they want. So he, they get hot grease because they were making fried shrimp and they pour it on his back. They pour it on his face and he's screaming. Um, the, this one, oh, there's a scene where a guy, just for the hell of it, they see, oh, could I pull your cheeks really hard and just rip your face off if I try really hard? And this girl comes in and the guy's like, help me, help me. He thinks the girl's gonna, it can, she's like, can I join in? And they're both pulling and they're pulling away the skin. Um, yeah, they do it with an arm too. Can I pull off your arm if I just rip really hard? The the main guy with, with the, 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 cheek, the cheeks cut as a sacrifice to one of the guys, he decides to cut off the tip of his tongue and give it to him. And it's not a clean slice. It's a hard work sawing manner that he does to get that and you see it the whole way but the scene that gets me the most and it's really hard to talk about um they get this girl and they put her on her knees and they put her by a coffee table and they get these clamps and they just stretch her tits out as far as they go on the coffee table and right where her nipples are which are way too far from her body her body they get a razor blade and go and off with the nipples. Uh, yeah, and you see it. And it's it's his movie was banned in many countries. Like I said, I'm not recommending Super Grover. I liked it when his helmet fell in front of his face. Wasn't that funny as hell? I'm not recommending any of these movies to anyone. But in this one, especially because it's two hours of just bad wow. thing after bad thing it's not a 90 minute movie or it's two solid hours of this shit non-stop and when i saw it 20 years ago i'm like i'm never watching that again well here i was last week it's you the killer watching it again for this the things i do for you guys <laughs> don't leave nasty comments <laughs> Yeah, that is one of the most notorious films. I've never seen it. I don't, I've never wanted to see it. I was going to say, I've had it on DVD for probably 20 years, but I cannot remember if I have ever seen it. Yeah, it's rough. It's a rough one. It sounds it. It sounds it. I got two more after that. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of rough, I got a rough one here, too. Um, 2002, uh, Irreversible. Yeah. Oof. You know, I mean, I, I like quite a few rape revenge films right um this one is like you get done watching this and you're like my god again i i went and bought it because you know everybody was talking about this when it first came out i mean even two thumbs up from uh ebert and roper i mean wow i have yeah. no idea right i, think uh, I, I went, did the same thing and, and listen back then you know we're talking 20 years ago yeah you know you couldn't just stream this shit we just you know, bought, we bought everything that we were just interested in. Right? There's a movie you, you heard about. You're like, oh, this is cool. It's 20 bucks. I'm just going to fucking buy it. And then I watched it. Yeah. And I was like, oh. So basically, it's the, it stars Monica Bellucci, you know, the amazing, uh, beautiful actress, and Vincent Castle. I believe they were married at the time. They might still be married. I'm not even sure. Um, and she 
They play boyfriend and girlfriend. Another main character in the film is her ex-boyfriend. So they're both cent central characters here. The film goes backwards, which is really bizarre. So it starts off, the film starts off where you have these two guys, Vincent Castle and the other, I forget the other actors, Albert Dupontel, I'm not sure if that was him or not, um, chasing after this one guy. They go through a club, they find him, and they basically are beating the shit out of him. As the movie goes on, you kind of find out why. So the whole story is um, Monica and Vincent are dating, right? They're in a great relationship, in love, whatever. She's actually pregnant, right? But this one night after they, you know, hang out or whatever, she's like walking home and she runs into this total miscreant dude who traps her down an alley and brutally rapes and just beats the shit out of her to the point where she's basically left for dead. And of course, she's pregnant and all this kind of stuff. So the, the way it works is that you find out what actually happens after they track this dude down right because that's the whole point of the whole film to get revenge for her but then as the movie you're watching the movie you see it all from reverse order of uh how actually everything happened and the rape scene and the you know the scene where he just beats the crap out of her is pretty lengthy uh it just goes on forever and it's just it's really graphic and it's really real looking and, you know, if you know Monica Bellucci, oh, we all love Monica Bellucci, right? And you're like, oh, my God, look what they're doing to poor Monica. And it's just it's there's nothing good about this film at all. As far as like there's no feel good moments. Uh, I honestly couldn't even say that I like the performances in it because the movie is just so bleak and downbeat and so graphic and just awful. And uh, I never watched it again. So I was going to say, Pete, I, I did the same. And because. You know, I think it's such a stupid idea that they play the movie backwards. Right. You know, you can't even in if this was a normal rape revenge movie, you would fucking enjoy the revenge. Right, when but the you can't guys grab the rapist. But right. you can't enjoy it because when you first see it, you're like, Well, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, why are they beating the shit out of this guy, right? Yeah. So at the end you're like, Oh, now I get it. But yeah. by then you don't care anymore, right? You you're just care. like so repulsed, you're like ah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's a good pick. Yeah. Craig, number two. Yeah, it's well, a lot more disturbing than Altered States, Craig. No offense. <laughs> I think you yeah, need to well, watch more disturbing shit, Craig. I love you. <laughs> You're watching some candy ass shit, Craig. This candy is exactly, ass shit. This is, this is the exactly fucking what descent? We, Seriously? This is exactly, this is no, exactly it's like listening to fucking Journey and being like, this is a heavy band. I mean, right. come on, Craig. I love you, but this you're exactly. killing me. This no one exactly was nominated for Oscars in our movie, like Dustin Hoffman or whoever. No, yeah. No, this is no exactly Oscars what here. we said last what we said last week. I said Chris is going to make fun of me because I said this is disturbing. He says, "Oh, you know, I love you." These, this you is know, disturbing. Hey, this is I was fucking going disturbing. With it. I was like, "All oh, the dentist scene." Yeah, that's well, I, that's crazy. why I, didn't, I wasn't going for things. Well, like but I can see the before. descent from the claustrophobic part of it because that is yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I'll give you a little bit. Yeah, is the Exorcist coming up next? No. <laughs> right, right, <yeah. laughs> Jesus, I mean, hey, it's more disturbing. Craig, than... I still love you, though. I still love you. <laughs> uh, I love you too. <laughs> Thanks for going there, Chris. But the no, no, I'm, I. But I mean, I, listen, no, Craig's I, picking. They're good movies. Yeah. Well, they they are. Are. Like I said, I guess. I guess I'm right. Pete, that's what I, that I said earlier. You know, what's better. disturbing to one person is not necessarily. You know, I, listen. I'm sure plenty of people would well, find. So, and I haven't seen, the dead I haven't seen. I've would never freak seen the fuck them. out. But yeah, at I've least people can watch movie. those movies. I yeah. recommend his movies. I don't. Yeah, recommend yes, mine. absolutely. If you're yeah, going to see I, anybody's movies, see Craig's movies because Craig's picking good, entertaining movies. Yeah. Well, F family I mean, movies. See them with your kids. Yeah, they're like I've, Disney. I've never, I've never to... seen. I've ne which is good. I mean, I've never seen the other movies that you guys are. I, I think I, I've heard. Of don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and and actually, the the movie, the, your first movie, Pete Eden Lake. I I was maybe confusing that with Wolf Creek. Which is uh, something which I think is different. That's another fast bender movie, isn't it? I don't remember. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Wolf Creek is pretty good. Uh, I would say I, I would say Craig, out of all of mine, Eden Lake is probably the only one I would really recommend. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, the, my, <laughs> mine, uh, again, disturbing for me uh, is uh, uh, by our good friend David Cronenberg. And uh, so I picked his 1975 movie Shivers mm -hmm. uh, as it's just it, it gives me you know, it's kind of watch again, putting putting the 
first time viewing uh, hat on, not necessarily, you know, multiple viewings, but just with all the, you know, the, the parasite looks like a turd and, you know, passing it between each, you know, each p other people and their throats are going out, the graininess of the, the, the way that the movie's filmed and, and everything. And, and uh, you don't, the, the ending scene with uh, everyone's attacking uh, the guy in the pool and, and, or, try, or trying to uh, like this bizarre orgy, you know, uh, going on in the pool of spreading this, this uh, parasite that's like a mix of uh, VD and an aphrodisiac or, 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 or something, but uh, it, it's, it's, it's creepy and little and disturbing with just what's, what's going on where every, you don't, uh, Barbara Steele in the tub, you know, with, uh, you know, that the little Larry's hot as balls in that. Yeah. That the, the, the parasite, Barbara goes Steele. In, 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 any, any opening, you know, possible. And so it's, it, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. It's not as, uh, you know, getting your tits cut off, you know, or anything like that, you know, that was mentioned previously, but it, but it's, uh, it, I think it's a decent, uh, at least a disturbing movie for me. So, uh, well, you know, so you sell them, though. you're selling them. Yeah. yeah. Talk I, about I them. love Shivers. That's my favorite Cronenberg movie. Shivers is great. I got the it on the body horror stuff. Is, is, I, I have the Blu ray. Yeah, I would, those, I'd buy those it on 4K. I was, when, I, when, I was, when I was doing my searches and things, like I said, things, things for me personally are, you know, sports injuries and uh body horror and and yeah. things like think more things that are realistic I, you know not you know because as chris said you know seeing something like dawn of the dead you know it's like well i can even even the first time seeing it it's like well there's zombies you know i can uh, i can over you know it, yeah it's gross but uh you know but it, but still it's like you know it's uh you know kind of uh not not real things that are a little bit more realistic like like henry portrait of a serial killer they showed that one at one of the uh, exhumed, sure, yeah. uh and they did I they did shivers a few show. years back yeah i mean but henry they showed during the day i think yeah. that was like a five like a five like dinner time, dinner movie or something yeah. like that <laughs> but uh but again that was uh that that's my pick uh move, moving it along for you chris so well sure. craig continues to pick fucking great movies i love yeah. shivers AKA they came from within. They, they came from within. Um, yes. But They're yeah. Better than our movies. Oh yeah, totally. Better yeah. movies. Craig's picking real, you know, movies that are and I mean to me, I've always felt like they came from within is like a more sexual version of Night of Living Dead. It's like a pseudo zombie yeah. movie. They're just running around and doing something sexual and they pass passing weird, passing this the bug thing. passing the cooties to, to yeah. each other and uh, and everything. Yeah. 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 But yeah, no, well, listen, that movie is like a Disney movie compared to my number two, uh, which is 1987's Necromantic, uh, which is a German film, uh, uh, which is like a fucking no, no budget movie. It was, I think, George Buttergate was the guy that made it. And it's fucking awful. It is not a great movie like Shivers or, you know, they came from within. It's fucking terrible. It's a piece of shit movie. Uh, I know a couple of years ago there was another horror movie promoter that uh i was talking to and he was like yeah he's like i'm flying in a really rare print from germany for, you know for my festival and i was like oh what print he's like necromantic and i was like i just said oh i was like but in my head i'm like are you fucking kidding me you couldn't pay me to sit through that movie again <laughs> long story short it's it's uh, uh it's about a movie it's a movie about a guy who uh works for a company that has to clean up uh, death scenes and murder scenes, uh, but he's secretly a necrophiliac, and uh, he's got a girlfriend, and she's also secretly a necrophiliac. And the part that really bothered me, uh, well, I mean, she, she shouldn't say really bothered me, but somewhat bothered me. The poster for Necromantic has this gorgeous woman with huge boobs and, and long dark hair screwing a corpse, but then when you see the movie, the girlfriend is ugly as fuck. And I'm like, oh, this is, you're totally ruining it right from the get-go. But yeah, it's a stupid movie. They, he picks up dead body parts and they have sex with it. And like one of the most uh, graphic scenes that I kind of remember is they pick up a burnt body and he brings it home. And then she gets a pipe and puts it 
uh, in on the dead body and then puts a condom on it and they have a threesome, the guy, the girl, and the dead body, the dead charred body. I mean, it's a terrible movie. Do not watch it or pay for it or rent it. It's awful. Go watch uh, They Came From Within. And uh, yeah, the movie's just, it's fucking garbage. It's disturbing, but it's its horrific garbage. So uh, yeah, that's my number two. Wasn't there a like a 45 minute short film about a mortician who was having sex with the bodies that he was the, supposed to be working on? Yes, this might be the same thing, Jamie, because originally it, he made it a short and then okay. it, there was some interest. So then he expanded it and made like, awesome. a, it was I think it was 40 something minutes. Then he made a 75 minute version. Shockingly, this fucking guy made money out of it. And then I know they did a second one and they might have even done a third one. I, I don't think I, I think I saw the second one and I, I, I that was it. But, you know, also, uh, Pete, you know, like people used to trade, um, you know, demo tapes uh, in the 80s and into the 90s. You know, I was a tape trader. I did the demo tape and the, the live concert stuff, but I was also really big in trading underground horror movies. Yeah. And, you know, before you could get Necromantic, you know, you could never get it at Blockbuster, but before you could get it at your local video store, uh, you know, there was bootleg VHS copies and I had multiple VCRs and this one was a hot underground tape. And I remember when I got it, I was like, this sucks. Like, is, it Amer- is it an American movie? Oh, it's a German okay. film. Yeah, German. German. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, and I think he made some other stuff, but yeah, do, do not watch this. Greg, if if they come from with, they came from within, bothered you, you will never sleep again if you watch Necromantic. So, <laughs> so steer clear, my friend. Steer clear. I'm already steering. Good. That's yeah. good. <laughs> All right, Jamie, you're number two. What we got here? Oh, Jesus Christ. It's oh, Antichrist. Yeah. Oh, boy. Um, to, help th- to help matters, to help things out, Craig, this is for you, man. I got I got another happy image. Let's see what it is. Oh, look at those two. Look at that. Wasn't that a great day? That was. <laughs> look at that. It's like two buddies hanging out. They talked for like two hours. Is the that Pete, in the middle. Pete Pardo and Carl Perkins? <laughs> That's Dennis D. Young. Ah, okay. It's been a little bit since I saw Dennis, so he got a little yes, older. Yes, that was a great, funny. Dennis D. Young was hilarious. Uh, they talked forever. They were like two old school buddies meeting for the first time in 30 nice. years. So focus on that as I talk about Antichrist, which is actually released by Criterion. Yes, yeah, believe it or not. And I, you know, I, I didn't. I I bought it blind. I read things like, "You will not believe your eyes. It's too intense." And I said, "It's on Criterion. It's too intense. I'm going to drop twenty bucks on it, and I'll be the judge." Well, it scarred me for life. <laughs> this movie scarred me for life. Uh, it's Thanks, directed by this guy, Lars von. Trier, Trier. He did the house that Jack built with uh, Matt Damon or Matt Dillon. I'm sorry, you might have seen it from like three years ago. That was pretty disturbing, but it's it's no Antichrist. Willem Dafoe, believe it or not, is in this movie, and he uh, he's married to this chick, and they're going at it. And as they're having sex, their son falls out a window and dies. There's nothing good in these movies that I have. Everything is bad. Um, Unlike Craig's movies. Yes. <laughs> um, I could just have his movie posters back here as my, <laughs> to balance things out. Oh, look, it's... Uh, um, so, so, Faith is grieving pretty bad. And Willem Dafoe is a therapist. So he goes, we're going to go out in the woods and I'm going to do therapy on you, even though she's afraid of nature. <laughs> so they go out in the woods in this cabin and she goes insane pretty quickly and she's doing violent sex with Willem Dafoe and she she's kind of a believer for some reason that all women are evil and um the violent sex turns really bad when she gets this block of wood and um just pounds it into Willem Dafoe's crotch and he passes out and the first half of this movie is a slow burn it's actually very you know, it, it has lots of atmosphere. It, it's like artsy. And then the second half, when she pounds him in the groin with the block of wood and he passes out, 
she drills a hole in his leg and uh, puts in this short pole about this long, slides it through. And then she gets a, a grindstone wheel and bolts it onto the pole so it's hard for Willem to move. And then a lot of bad things happen that I'm not even going to talk about because I learned my lesson with happiness. And then the scene happens. The scene that will scar you for life. And I was wondering how I could talk about this without talking about it. So I thought I could reenact it the cutest way possible. This is a stuffed beaver that I have here. Nice beaver. A little stuff, yes, a little stuffed beaver. I named him Cliff with two Fs, not a T. I named him Cliff with two Fs as in fuck this movie and fuck this scene. <laughs> what she does is she takes out these scissors but don't and cut all the is passed out. <laughs> and what you think she's going to do is to Willem Dafoe is, you know what? Cut off his junk. You're like, oh, no. Here it comes. Everything I read is going to be true. But that's not what she does. She takes her beaver and she puts it right into the camera. And you see her whole beaver. And she takes the scissors and cuts her poor cliff right there. And there's blood coming out. There's no blood in my cliff. And you can't believe what you just saw. And I did rewatch parts of this movie uh, for this taping tonight, but I did not watch that scene because I, I never wanna see it again. It's, <laughs> it's like unlike anything I've ever seen in any movie, but I did watch the extra, the supplements on this movie and they showed how it was done. It eases it a little. Uh, oh, it was just fake. Yeah, I knew it was fake. It's nice to see that the body, you know, the legs only went out that far and everything. But still, I don't ever want to see that scene again. You got to get that guy back on, Pete, <laughs> for another two hour interview. There you go. Two hours of fun, right? Yes. <laughs> this is this movie is not two hours of fun. <laughs> And it's on Criterion, which is crazy. It's on Criterion, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I started to watch that once. And I, I guess, like Jamie said, it's a slow burn because I tapped out. I was bored. I was like, I don't know what everybody's talking about. I'm out. And I never went back to it. How long is that movie? About an hour and 45 minutes long. Oh, okay. But that same guy, didn't he do like two movies called Pornography, if I remember right? Man. And they're like, they're each like two hours long. I don't even know what they're about, but I watched them and fast forward because he's oh, that's got a like, nymph nymph nymphomaniac. That's it. Nympho like nymphomania, yeah. nymphomaniac. One yeah, and two. They're, they're like both that. like, they're like two hours and some odd minutes. They're like two, two plus hours each. There's a couple like fuck scenes, but yeah. it's like, oh it's my like, God. It's like, yeah. And then like, I like YouTube every them. hour. I YouTube, I, sometimes when I don't know how to say someone's name, I'll YouTube them. And like in an interview and when they introduce them, they'll say the name. Ah, oh, well, I had a hard time with this guy, but I did see in some kind of panel, he made a very bad Hitler joke. So the guy is- I'm trying to remember that. A little- yeah. eh, eh. Well, listen, listen, if these are the movies he's making, he's gotta be not all, all there. Yeah. Yeah, we're not all there for watching these movies. Well, Craig yeah. is all right. He's fine. Craig, There's Craig nothing wrong with him. The rest of us are fucked. Yeah, there's some, there's some problems here. Yeah. <laughs> all right, my number two is Cannibal Holocaust. So, you know, this is like one of the, I mean, this is like a notorious film, right? So I remember back in like the, like maybe mid nineties, maybe a little bit later than that. Uh, Chris, you remember when they, they, they did like, they put out this like deluxe anniversary DVD version of a double oh, yeah. disc. And they, right? you probably have it, right? So I was like, all right, you know, I've never seen this film, but everybody talks about it. So I'm going to go buy it. I mean, I bought it. I was so excited to watch it. And I go put it in and I was like, oh, and just absolutely horrified at the, the animal mutilation and torture shit in this. And I was like, I was absolutely revolted. And even this, even the non-animal stuff in here, some of it's kind of hard to watch. Yes. And I was like, I don't care how notorious this is or how many people love this. I never want to see this again, dude. I sold that shit the next day. Well, wow. Get it out of my house. And that's yeah. it. Well, I, when we when I did run it at Hudson Horror, 
Um, and yeah, the, the, the theater chain had no problem because they'd already ran in the city. But I had to warn everybody, listen, they, I am telling you, this is rough. Yeah. Like, what was it called? If you've never seen it, Cannibal Holocaust. Oh, the one Didn't you, you have some smart ass kids in your crowd who thought this was nothing. And oh, then yeah. got- and then once once the you know, once it got going, boop, they, they shut up. Yeah. Um, because yeah, this is I mean, I, I I'm pretty sure that's the show that's somebody threw up in the urinal. And then of course I had to make it one of the rules. If you have to throw up, please, you know, throw up in the please vomit in the toilet, <laughs> not the urinal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh it's rough. Yeah, and just for me, yeah, just oof, no thanks, yeah. no thanks. Yeah, the turtle scene, I was just like, oh my god. And Pete, if you ever, if you ever saw it off thirty-five millimeter projected on the screen, I was like, what? And I already seen, like I said, I'd already owned it a bunch of times. Yeah, not for me. Yeah, right, back to Craig, number one. I should change my name in the corner here to uh, tonight. I'm playing the name. I'm playing the part of Rich Catino. So uh, that I'm up, being up, up, up next, now. Puffy Kaminsky. Let's yeah, go there. Yeah, well, my, my, my next, my next pick, you fuckers, is Bambi because that goddamn movie was disturbing. You know, at the end, you know, when those when, when, when that when that deer dies. Oh man, god damn it, that is disturbing. All right, hit us, Craig. This this one, this is the one. No, nah, well, you know, it's it's uh, some. Uh, Low hanging fruit, at least, was with uh, that that I had thought was with uh, with the the Exorcist. The first, uh, and actually, the never time uh, that's not my my pick. But uh, the first time I saw that I, in its entirety was I think when they, uh, I guess it was in what ninety eight when it was its twenty fifth anniversary. They re released it theatrically, so that was the first time I saw that uh, in its. Oh, you never saw it earlier. No, I saw clips of it uh, in in movies, but never uh, sat to watch it. Uh, sat to watch it until I saw it on the on the big screen and so it had the extra scenes in it uh with the crab walk and all that stuff so you know of course so that's a uh disturbing movie but along the same lines uh the one the one that I picked is uh, a little bit more recent it's from uh 2014 and it's called the the taking of Deborah Logan um but this is this is a sort of uh, found footage ish a uh, movie about a graduate graduate student who's making uh, her thesis uh, 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 her thesis about uh, Alzheimer's patients and the toll that it takes on not only them but on the family members. So um, they go to this uh, the, uh, to to visit uh, Deborah Logan and her daughter, who is uh, uh, maybe in her in her forties and is taking care of her mom, and she's slowly you can uh, she seems she seems normal but they have uh documented uh footage of her just like you know slipping a little bit and getting uh or you know on early onset dementia and everything but it turns out with uh what there's some other strange things when this camera crew comes up and they're setting you know uh, cameras up in all parts of the room to, uh, in rooms to 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 film the to film this this house but they start noticing strange strange things while at times when they're filming Deborah it turns out that she is possessed she's she doesn't have alzheimers and um she her in her old job she was a uh, switch you know a switchboard operator you know jobs that don't even exist anymore and one of the things that she's doing in the movie uh, a few times she kind of goes into these weird states and she's connecting calls to this one particular number uh, of her doctor who turns out had uh was doing ritualistic sacrifices and needed uh five five uh, girls uh killed in order to to conjure a demon she's speaking in tongues or speaking in different languages when they're uh filming her and the daughter's saying my mother my brother doesn't know how to speak uh you know french or anything like that and it's like well that's what she's saying and it's like has the there's uh just a lot of strange goings on in the movie where, where uh things are you know move, uh, things are moving around and sounds and the the woman uh deborah logan she i mean it's just a, a normal looking old lady but the way she uh starts to get more like sullen and and uh with the way she looks as, as she's possessed and it's disturbing for me on a you know a little bit of a 
personal level, my, my mom's sister had uh, died of dementia. So just seeing stuff like this is a little disturbing. And even though it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's under the guise of being possessed and everything, it's still, it's still pretty creepy in parts. It has a little bit of a, a slight twist ending uh, to it and everything, but it's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's, it's on, it's on Tubi. It's, uh, uh, and it's, like I said, it's from about uh, 2014. It's, uh, you know, a decent movie, not, uh, you know, some of these uh, uh, gore fests, you guys, which are fine, but, uh, but check it out if you haven't seen it. It's, uh, you know, the taking of Deborah Logan. Yeah, I, I saw it. it. I looked right? it up in my book. I did see it, but I don't remember a damn thing about it. Yeah, I, I don't think I ever saw it, but it's one of those things like, you know, I, I always see it and I'm like, oh, yeah, I never saw that. But it, to me, it's also kind of like, you know, every shark movie after Jaws can never top it. Like to me, every every exorcist movie after The Exorcist yeah. can never top it. So even the I'm never in a rush to do, you know, yeah, it's uh, not necessarily topping it or anything, yeah. but it, I think it's just uh, just be because of it's a it's not just. Uh, uh, here's somebody who's possessed that it's under the under the yeah. guise of uh, dementia. Have you seen that uh, Emily Rose film? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. I've never seen it because yeah, I saw that. Yeah, sucks. Yeah. It wasn't bad. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Was, was, wait, was it Emily Rose or Aud Audrey Rose? Emily, or Emily? Emily. Audrey Rose is a '70s movie. The possession of Emily Rose. The possession, of, Emily Rose. The 70s one. Yeah, the possession yeah. of the possession of the ex no the exorcism of Emily Rose. Exorcism of Emily Rose. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it stars the it stars the the, the woman from uh, Dexter to play the sister in Dexter. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, one of one of my honorable mentions was the last exorcism, which is which is a, another pretty good one. That one has to deal with uh, uh, the guy who plays Howard uh, Patrick Fabian for, uh, Howard from. Uh, Better Call Saul uh, uh, play, plays an, an evangelist who does exorcisms that are totally bullshit, and but he he makes people feel better by what he does with like a little light show and and everything, and so he's finally had it and he's like I'm not doing any more of these they're all bullshit and then so but it's he gets a letter saying please come help my daughter and then it turns out she really is possessed and that uh, that one that's kind of a, a creepy movie I, I I didn't really realize that uh, that was kind of a hit uh, from 2010 they made a sequel and the sequel is not particularly good but the first one the first one's pretty good cool Chris all right again I would watch any of Craig's movies over over anybody else's. Um, this movie is the next movie I'm going to talk about uh, is really bad. Uh, this movie is so bad uh, that um, I forget who who brought a copy to my house. We watched it. Me and a bunch of friends watched it because it was notorious for being so, you know, violent and, and graphic and disturbing uh, that the six or seven of my friends that watched it, uh, we immediately agreed that we would never talk about it again. And we refer to that movie as that movie that we will not talk about. Oh, I wonder if it's my pick. And here you are talking about it tonight. And here you're talking uh, yeah, about it. And here we are. Uh, it's a 2011 film called a Serbian film. Oh, it is my number one. <laughs> and yeah, it's, um, it's, it's rough. Uh, you know, um, there is nothing it's well made like necromantic is a, is a garbage, piece of shit movie that's fucking terrible this is a well-made movie but it's just so disturbing you know that it's just like you're like why would someone make this movie there there's nothing entertaining at all long story short uh, there it's an ex-porn star from from what i remember who uh he's down on his luck and he gets a gig to star in some indie film so he does it for money but then when he gets there, he finds out it's really a snuff movie uh, with murder and pedophilia and necrophilia. And it's um, awful. Um, yeah, it's um, I, I don't even know what else to say. It is. You can't go there with a lot of it. You just don't go here. Look at my yeah. dog in there. there and, uh, I was waiting for a, a picture of a, a dog or a cat or something. Yeah. Dog but, in yeah. a raincoat um it's it's really rough and as someone who has seen a lot like even though this is fake you know like i will sit through cannibal holocaust 20 times before i sit through this again like i've played cannibal holocaust i have the laser disc and the dvd and the blu-ray 
Uh, I will never sit through this film again. I know Exhumed Films has a print of this. If they ever play this at a 24-hour show, I will immediately get up and leave and come back in two hours. Is uh, the movie is, Serbian? Uh, is it's it, called yes. A Serbian Film. But is it, is it foreign? It's from or, Serbia. Yeah, is it, it's from Serbia. Okay. And it's, it's dubbed. I mean, it's subtitled. Yeah, I was going to say, I, th I think the version I saw was subtitled. It's been so yeah. long, I, I don't even remember. Subtitled. Um, um, yeah. I was going to say, if this ain't on your number one list here, it's because you've never seen it. It's yeah. as simple I've as that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why it's not your number one. Yeah. Uh, I did watch it again. Oh, I'm sorry, Janie. For yeah, I would not. I subjected myself to all these movies again in a short amount of time. I had to take breaks in the middle of the movie, yeah. go outside, get fresh air, and come back and finish it. It was rough, man. Yeah, this is this is really one of those where you you question yourself. You know, like you know, why am movie? I watching this? Yeah, like why I feel comfortable talking about this movie to yeah. about four thousand people. Yeah, and it's funny because like at, at dinner, the missus was like, "Oh, so what's tonight's topic?" And I'm like. Oh, you know, like, you know, disturbing horror movies. So the missus is like, oh, like, uh, like Last House on the Left. And I laughed. I'm like, are you kidding me? That's a fucking Disney movie compared to a Serbian film. <laughs> like, that's like something Craig would pick. No offense, Craig. I love you. I, I, since I did watch it recently, I will touch on a couple things. Uh, when he gets the job with this guy, uh, he doesn't know what kind of movies he's going to be making. But the money is so good that he signs the contract. And once he goes in, they pump him full of uh, drugs and Viagra. So it becomes like this. He always has that animalistic style about him. You know, like in the beginning of the movie, you know, his wife's like, you know, you make love to me, but you fuck these people on film. Why don't you fuck me for a chance or for a change? And they get a little, you know, he's pulling the hair a little bit. So he's got that side to him. But then it really comes out when they pump them full of drugs. And um, th there's a scene where they come up with a new genre of porn. And when they yell it over and over. Over and I'm over gonna, again. I'm not going to say it. It's the only thing said in English in the movie. One of the it's only the things. Most, it's the most memorable line. It's the, the most memorable. And it rhymes. And once you hear it, you can And you kind of see it. They're, sh they're projecting it on a on a screen uh they don't show the act but you know what the hell is going on yeah. and it's ridiculous and is probably the worst thing ever put on any ever screen. yeah ever and it makes you wonder like what producer would be like yeah, give me the come pitch. up with this idea give me the give me the pitch craig and you're like oh yeah, i gotta back that let me give and, you a million bucks to make that movie and the like, ending what? the ending is you know the second time i watched it it had in parentheses edited version I said really? the version is still going to be bad. I think I, I, you know, I saw this movie 10 years ago, whatever, 11 years ago. And uh, I noticed they cut something out at the end because the end is unspeakable horror. What this guy, this ex porn star, washed up porn star, his new job, what he's doing. I won't talk about it, but they do show a face in the original version that they don't show in the version I just saw. And then, his his wife, him, and his son are just damaged goods at the end of this movie. They they just can't live life anymore. So their son is like, I don't know, five or six. And it ends with all three of them in bed. The guy, the son in the middle, and the wife. And the guy takes the gun and puts it in the back of his wife, pulls the trigger, and I guess the bullet goes through all three of them. And they're dead. But here's the kicker. They're dead and you think it's over. These people come into the room. Oh, the cops are here. No, they they bring their film crew. And in death, these people are not escaping the world that they got themselves involved with. Even in death, they're still in it. And the words the guy says as the last, the last five words, you can't believe that he said it. When, when they say it in the credits roll, you're like, what? Get the fuck out of here. And you're watching credits as it slowly sinks into your head. Do not watch this movie. No. Do if you do, if you're that curious, don't watch it with a friend. They'll think you're not. Don't watch it with your wife. Surely don't watch it with your wife. Just don't watch it. Just don't watch it, man. <laughs> yeah. If, if, you're you've seen it, if you're that curious, read the synopsis on Wikipedia or IMDb or yeah. 
And if you've seen it, don't even make a comment. Yeah. In, in the comments below saying you saw it. You know, don't single yourself out. Just leave it alone. Like I said, me, me and my friends to this day, that if we if I go, remember that movie that we're not supposed to talk about? That that's the movie. That's it. The that's how unspeakable this film is. It is on indie flicks, which you can get through Amazon. What's well, funny because I was going to ask you, like, oh, did you stream this somewhere? Like, what? I googled how because I didn't think I was going to find it. I, I, I can't so remember either. how I saw it ten years ago. Yeah, we got uh, we got a DVD of it. Somebody brought a DVD to my house, so we watched it. Yeah, someone at work told me if you really want to test your, you know, your stomach. Oh, they, listen, I was like, I'm all for that. So no, many of these are like hot sauces you know, and, and roller coasters. I want to keep testing I, myself. You want to hear a really heavy band? Check this yeah. band. Same thing. Yeah. You want to watch a Same really thing. fucked up movie? Watch this movie. Right. Okay. Pete, you want to try bitter IPA? Try this one. Right. I'm going to stay away from the Serbian film. Yeah, don't, yeah. don't do it, Pete. Don't, don't do it. Do it. Okay. Yeah, my number one is uh, the Human Centipede, first film. Um, I, I I didn't find anything redeeming about this whatsoever. I was absolutely revolted by the whole thing, the whole story of it all. I remember, like, you know, when this first came out, like everybody was talking about. It. It's like, oh, have you seen the Human Centipede? Oh, it's wild, you know, whatever. So I was like, I, I talked to like three people that I knew who were like, oh yeah, I saw it the other day. Oh. It, it, gross it's weird you got to see it and i'm like all right i'll check it out so i rented it i never bought it thank god um and i remember watching this thing and i'm like first of all this surgeon guy he's nuts this whole idea we're going to create like a new human race where we're going to like stitch them together and make one re you know digestive <laughs> system i'm just like the whole concept of it it's just, so stupid yeah it's so ridiculous and i'm just watching this i'm like you know and then this poor schmuck you know cop who kind of stumbles upon it because the people are missing and and then he gets involved in what's going on just like this is just ridiculous and the whole you know when they finally stitches them all together you see that just you, you're watching this and you're like why why did they make this movie yeah. I, I just don't get it. and i'm just i'm just revolted and i got done watching it. i'm like i went back to all those people that told me i should watch it. i'm like why did you tell me to watch that movie <laughs> that was just absolutely revolting disturbing disgusting and it wasn't graphic i mean it's not a gory film at all it's just the whole idea the whole it's premise gross, of everything yeah. they do in the movie is just it's just stomach turning it's like oh this is just uh, yeah so I'm you, the, the second one is worse with this guy who doesn't know what he's doing you know it's so funny i thought that was the guy in the first one so no that's okay. from the second one. i mixed him up in my head but i think he works in a garage okay and he's like you know what i and he's watching the movie as he works he's like i can do this i do remember that guy did chiller theater some years ago as a you know a, a guest i don't know if it, i'm sure somebody not craig but somebody got his autograph <laughs> <laughs> Craig was getting his picture taken with Mickey Mouse in the corner. <laughs> was Craig the kid in the back with the balloon and the, and the cotton candy? I always like balloon animals too. Oh. Uh, yeah, no, no desire to see uh, Human Centipede the second film. Never, no, no. I don't. I will. I never want to watch the first one ever again. So. Yeah, no. So just everybody watching, we are no longer going to talk about the Human Centipede on this. Show. I'm getting his face right off there. And yeah, we'll, there you go. The beach scene looks better. There. I like these two guys. Like, those two guys are good. Yeah. So there you have it, everybody. Uh, you know, other well, than what about honorable mentions? Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. that's right. Yeah, that's right. Honorable mentions. Yes. Yeah, I was gonna say real. Uh, uh, one of the ones I had, which I, in the, and a, a quick quick story, was Bone Tomahawk. And it, and uh, oh, I always wanted to see that. And I I uh, it's on it's on Tubi. And uh, and it's like it's got a lot of star power in it. I mean, you got Kurt Russell, Patrick Wilson, Matthew Fox, uh, David Arquette, Sid Haig is in it briefly. Uh, the movie's two hours and ten minutes though, and th I wouldn't. The movie itself is not disturbing, but there's a few s scenes in it that are very disturbing. None of your movies were disturbing. Well, but yeah, I'm but kidding. It's, I'm kidding. It, it's. Uh, I mean, w w in a. a there's just there's a they're trying to rescue a group of uh, 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 people who were taken captive by uh, Native Americans who are basically like can cannibals. Uh, they look like uh, the people from Cannibal Holocaust, but they're Native Americans. And oh, there's a scene where one of the guys is scalped slowly. They take the scalp, hammer it into his mouth, and 
then turn him upside down and have him. So right in front of Kurt Russell, the, the, the humorous part of this was that I last, last week in preparation for this, I was Googling, uh, you know, things to, things to watch. And I got to the, for some reason, I got to the gym and I was like Googling this and I watched that scene that I was just telling you about while standing, waiting to do my cardio. And I had my head, my earphones and I had pretty good, pretty good uh, earphones and the sound of the the having part is pretty uh pretty realistic like a like you would like a corn stalk you know being torn and, and the hammering and that so i was standing there at the gym listening to this and it's like okay now it's time to do <laughs> to do some exercises so that was uh that that was uh that was uh, something there it's good but it's it's a little long but uh, I mean, I had also uh, the fly, you know, for the body horror uh, aspect and everything and that you don't want to see bad things happen to good people. You know, Jeff Goldblum's a good person in this and you feel so horrible for that all these uh, terrible things are happening to him. I had the, uh, said the Green Inferno. I think that's a, basically a remake of Cannibal Hunt. Yeah, it's from Eli Roth. Loose, yeah, I mean, and again, just for the way the first guy is killed in that, that he's like the nicest guy in the world and he's just... Uh, uh, killed horrifically. Uh, Green Room, if you've ever seen this, with oh, uh, that's Patrick, a that's a really good again. With Patrick Stewart. Out really good movies. Yeah, I mean, where it's uh, neo Nazi uh, uh, party uh, going on. Patrick this Stewart, punk, this punk band. That's Patrick Stewart uh, against cat against type uh, plays the. Yeah the uh the leader really? of them it's disturbing for me because th th honestly the music is somehow because it's I, I like heavy music and everything but i just the the, the nazi stuff really kind of makes me uncomfortable when i when uh whenever whenever i watch that and uh i mean i had also had you know the, the shining and eyes wide shut but not because they were not because it was you know graphic or anything but just the the use of sound in those with the kid driving his trike through and hearing, you know, hardwood floor rug, hardwood floor rug, and that, you know, and uh, the the music in in both movies uh, and everything is just kind of disturbing. The Shining They're was similar. The first, Shining was the first rated R movie I ever saw as a kid. Uh, I was like like eight or something like that, and so that kind of stuck with me. Seeing, you know, the bathtub. that was my first movie too, rated R. The, the, and my uncle, bathtub. right when uh, Jack Nicholson dropped an f bomb, he turned it off. Yeah, the the you know the the bathtub scene and the anytime even still seeing the twins uh at the end of a hall seeing things in in a, in a distance that are kind of creepy eyes wide shut does that also where, and the dudes with the masks on yeah and when, when Cruz is walking around the street just something simple that guy keeps following him it's just it's kind of creepy i think all of us have had something maybe similar to that where you think you're being watched or uh you know and that so uh Sorry for picking such light, uh, lightweight things, but those were. You did good, Craig. Cheer for Craig. Right. Did good Finish job. strong. Yeah. Yeah, you, you did good, Craig. Oh, thank you. Chris, what do you got? Okay, I got uh, three honorable mentions. I'm surprised nobody picked this one. Uh, this one was quite disturbing to me as a kid when I saw this. I rented this in like 1983 or 84. Uh, and I thought it was all real. And then within like two years, I found out that like 90% of it is fake. Uh, 1978's Mondo movie, Faces of Death. That's what I was going to um, say. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, if you, you know, as a kid, I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. But then, yeah, as a, you know, within a couple of years, because it, it was so horrific, everybody started doing exposés on it. It was like, this is all staged and fake. Um, Even but, the monkey scene where they eat the monkey brain. Yeah, I thought that I thought the monkey scene was fake too. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, um, my other picks: uh, a 1992 movie called uh, "The Men Behind the Sun." Uh, this is kind of like uh, Ilsa, but without any beautiful women. And it's a uh, it's a, if I remember right, it's a, a Chinese movie that's made about during World War II, and it's a uh, Japanese army are uh, performing Nazi-like uh, uh, atrocity experiments on the Chinese uh, during World War II. And it's a pretty horrific movie. Uh, one movie I, I definitely remember was kind of, uh, uh, the part I definitely remember was kind of like in uh, Terminator 2, where they, you know, uh, the liquid uh, Terminator gets frozen and then they, they smash him. They do that to a guy with his hand, but 
you know, his hand is is uh, real. It's, it's quite graphic. Uh, then the other one uh, is somewhat another one that was very infamous in the on the tape trading scene in the 80s and 90s, early 90s, uh, Guinea Pig 2, The Flower of Flesh and Blood. Uh, this was a movie. Uh, this is a Japanese film. It's a short. It's only like 50 minutes. And it's basically um, it's this guy that has a bunch of tools and he's got a, uh, a beautiful woman strapped to a table and he eviscerates her for 40 minutes, uh, a bit at a time. Um, the, uh, the special effects are really not that good. The sound effects are horrific, uh, but this was one that was heavily traded uh, in, the, uh, in the underground scene. And I remember getting a copy and like, yeah, uh, you know, when I was younger, it is, it is somewhat disturbing. Uh, Charlie Sheen sometime in the 90s got a copy of it and somehow spoke to the police about it because he thought it was real. Uh, he thought this was a, like a snuff film of a guy really chopping up a woman uh, bit by bit. And I was like, wow, Charlie Sheen must have been high because <laughs> this is obviously uh, special effects, but it, it's still uh, pretty disturbing. And yeah, those are my, my three uh, honorable mentions. Cool. <clears throat> Jamie, got any left? I got three on the fly here. Uh, the Terrifier, the scene in the middle of that movie. It's pretty bad. Um, I just watched uh, Last House on the Left, the new version. And I was a little surprised. Uh, the rape scene goes on way too long it's for a long somewhat time. newer movie. I was surprised they let it go on that long. And a movie that always disturbed me, A Clockwork Orange, always made yes. me feel really yeah, uneasy a, I just especially the that eye on, scene that's, yeah. i love that movie i watched that last week that was on uh, turner classic movies like a week ago yeah, yeah. I watched that on 4k yeah i hadn't yeah. seen it in a while that's yeah that's a pretty bizarre weird ass movie yeah. yep all right so i i had terrifier as well in fact chris and i watched this together uh yeah, a year or so ago. ago yeah it's there's some brutal scenes in that right there's yeah a, yeah uh, here's a really weird little film, and it's disturbing in a lot of ways. Uh, Possession with Sam Neill oh, yeah. and uh, Adriana Adj or, or Isabella Adjani. Yes. Um, yeah, it's not American film, right? No, it's I think it's German. Yeah, film, I, think, right? I think French. Oh, that years ago. Yeah, it's really weird because like the most of the film deals with like this, you know, the the falling apart relationship of the two of them. Uh, or for all all sorts of weird reasons, and it's just it's a weird kind of hard to watch film on, in that aspect. And then all of a sudden, like maybe halfway through, a little bit more, all of a sudden there's this creature and like, monster. Yeah, yeah, it's, just, that, yeah, it's like it's just really weird, weird ass movie. And the ending is just kind of like bleak and like, ugh. I so, gave it no stars out of five. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't blame you. Either. It's been decades, though. It's been decades. It, but it's in a way, you know. I think in, in the years since it came out, a lot of people look at it a little now. Look at it more of like kind of like an art house film. So yeah, okay. it's very well made. It's but it's just like it's weird. Yeah, it's I was weird. probably sixteen when I saw it. Yeah. Uh, this film came out in the early two thousands. High tension. Oh yeah. I really liked it until I got to the ending and I fucking hated the ending. Yeah. It, it's, it's good in that you got this very strong female character, but at, at the same token, you know, I think they they were really kind of like with that frontiers film I showed you before. There were a lot of these foreign horror films in like early two thousands. They were really going for these really graphic, just horrific and very disturbing uh, imagery. And like, they're like, they were all trying to out, um gore each other and out violent violence and, and out brutalize the next and i think some of these movies just just went a little too overboard with it so there were there were moments of this i really liked a lot and this one got a lot of attention but i, yeah. I, I think i watched again and i was just like oh my god you know it's like I, a lot of the directions they were going in with horror films in the early 2000s for me was just was going a little too over the top i think and it just you know Sometimes you just want better. You want good stories as well as all the other stuff, right? Um, what else? Uh, the Witch Who Came From the Sea. Oh, yeah. I mean, 
I'm not even going to get into it because we've, we've talked about it before, but this is just, man, some heavy stuff there. Really just the, the, the woman in this movie is just absolutely nuts. Uh, another one of those real brutal, just bleak films, uh, The Night Train Murders. Oh, I, I ran that off 35 millimeter. And I mean, it's a good film, but man. That's another one, yeah. Had, oh. had to warn people, like, this is not an easy movie to sit through. No, it's not. It's not. Uh, and lastly, um, I, I, you know, I, I kind of used to enjoy these films. I don't really anymore, but uh, Saw 2. Just oh, I don't like any of things on another Is one. that when they fall into the pit of syringes? The needles, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. needles. I'm not good with needles. And when there's a million of them. And yeah. pigs and all this. Yeah, it's just, yeah, I don't know. It's just, they, at least some of these Saw movies, they just take things a little. You know, I like the original concept of it. But when you're yeah. just... Uh, when there's all of a sudden no kind of like uh, ah you're gonna go do that and it's just all about being more brutal than the next one um i don't know sometimes uh you know this whole torture shit and then just extreme brutality in in favor of you know everything else just doesn't really work for me my problem with the saw movies is like wait you would need a fucking you would need a team of engineers to figure out these fucking traps and then get people set up in and i'm like to me one guy one guy's no one guy it's so, so unrealistic i remember i saw the first one in the theater and when the guy gets up off the floor i'm like are you fucking kidding me he was he didn't fall asleep he didn't fart he's just yeah. fucking lying there i go this is all so those stupid. hours so yeah he I go, was this determined is the I, I will believe any zombie movie or evil dead or fucking <laughs> anything before i believe that that guy just lied there without moving or farting or whatever I'm like, but, but at least it was at least it surprised you right you're like holy shit they actually went yeah. there then but then they've done like six movies after that where it's just basically oh, yeah. they're trying to outdo all every movie's like oh we're trying to find more stuff that that you that we can wow you with that he's actually going to do it's just like yeah hey. i remember watching the second one at my buddy's house it was me and two friends and well once they started going through all the scenes with all these elaborate traps i'm like yeah. i'm going home i'm like that's how stupid this movie is i, I cannot suspend I, I like pro wrestling, but I cannot, and, and comic books, but I cannot, my level uh, of uh, dispen- uh, what, what's it called, Pete? Uh, suspension uh, of disbelief. Suspension of disbelief only goes so far. I'm like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I, I just remember I walked out. I think that's the one with Marky Mark or his brother. Yeah, his brother. Yeah, I think yeah, that was his yeah. 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 That's it. And I, I walked out. I'm like, that's it. And I never, you know, there's like 20 more movies after that. <laughs> At least, yeah. I've lost kind of how many there are. I seven. stopped watching. I think there's seven of them. Yeah. Yeah. Is there? Yeah. yeah. And they did the one with Chris Rock not that long ago, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I I, I've never seen it. I saw the trailer and that was it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. no interest. And I think, uh, yeah, I think that's all I got on mine. So. All right. Yeah. Well, this was a happy episode, huh? <laughs> Oh, for sure. <laughs> so for everybody watching uh let us know watch craig's more. movies yeah watch yeah. craig's don't watch any of ours yeah that's yeah. you know i i can maybe recommend yeah, one or two of mine but uh well you know next week we'll I'm, do our favorite disney movies yes there you go there nice. you go well hopefully uh, if all goes according to plan we all get a chance to watch it we will be reviewing the new predator movie prey next week so We'll uh, see how that goes. If we're all able to watch it, we will try and do a uh, roundtable review of that next week. Uh, if that's not the case, then we'll find something else to talk about. But it won't be this disturbing kind of like stuff. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, revolting collection of films. Uh, and uh, let us know what you think of some of these films, as well as some others that really, really disturb you. And uh, put them in the comments below. Visit us on the web at www.seetranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together, all the damn time. For Craig Kaminsky, the guy who had the best films today, Chris Allo, Jamie Laszlo, and myself who had the shit. Have a good night, everybody. We'll see you next week here on the Monsters Den. Take care.